Okay, to find VA and VB, we can take advantage of the fact that this is all in series and the I will be the same. So if we find that current through uh, this circuit, then we can use Ohm's law to find the voltage across any resistance in the circuit. So uh, if we want to find VA, it will be that 1.6 milliamp current that we just found. And that's going to be multiplied by, say, VA. We're going to find it across this, uh, this 2K resistance, and that will be... 3.333 uh, 3 volts. And then VB, by the same principle, will be the uh, 1.6 milliamps times the resistance of VB. 1.666 millivolts. So this problem, number two, kind of comes down to the question of how to process strings. Um, so the Arduino code, we can see that it is taking values uh, in from potentiometers. It's putting them into a string right next to each other. And then it's going to print x, y string. And then I'm assuming that XY string goes into the processing code and is called in string. So to understand the problem here, uh, it's helpful to understand that a string with some values separated by commas can be called uh, comma separated, separated values. So if we want to analyze the individual values or tokens in a, in a string that's separated by commas, we can use different functions that processing has, um, but split is one that's very helpful. Basically, it'll go through the string and it'll split up the string into individual, individual tokens uh, based off of the delimiter you specify. So for this kind of string, we would want to specify the comma as the delimit delimiter. Uh, if we wanted multiple delimiters to specify the difference in between the string values, then we could use split tokens and you can specify multiple delimiters. The problem here is that the string that we're feeding in is separating the values by a comma. Um, but the processing code wants to split the values when it finds a forward slash t. So it's not going to find any forward slash t, so it's never going to split the string up and divide it into its x and y components like it wants to. So if we could just change this to a comma, it would be able to properly split up the string that is being fed in. Part three, uh, so the ellipse function works like this, and the radius will be half of the width or half of the height, because we're talking about a circle, it'll be the same, and that will be five. The ADC on the Arduino is a 10-bit ADC, so it has the ability to detect two to the 10 discrete analog levels, and 2 to the 10 is 1024. Since Arduino is uh, zero indexed, the values we're going to be able to see are 0 to 1023. Okay, so I got my left dial now helping me go left or right, except it's kind of inverse. When I turn it left, it goes to the right. I got this right one. This right one actually goes up and down properly. Okay, so I've modified the code a little bit. I've changed the shape from an ellipse to a circle. I have changed the color. Uh, to be, well, um, kind of whatever I want. It's yellow, black, blue, and white. As, uh, as I move across the screen, there's a gradient at the different corners. I've also constructed a, a fence so that the circles can't go out of bounds their whole diameter always stays within bounds. Here I'm demonstrating uh, the processing program, but one of the axes is a function of time. I think the problem statement was a little bit vague. So I interpreted it as iterating the x-axis plotting once every 50 milliseconds. So a new circle gets printed every 50 milliseconds. And I did that with some timing code using the millis function. And we can see that it works because if I change it a little bit, if I double the time, yeah, if I double the time, we can see that the time actually doubles, hence an effective timer. Oh.